All right, welcome. This is season five of the SOB podcast. I'm John Shrek McPhee, the sheriff of Baghdad. Uh, hey, on season five, we're gonna have some great guests. We're gonna have, we're gonna do podcasts. We're gonna do this video podcast, right? We're we're coming live at you, right? So, episode one, we went back to the first podcast. I'm with my man Spencer. We'll do some catching up, and then we talk about the Ukraine. Uh, check this out. It's one you don't want to miss. And the best stuff kind of comes at the end for the Ukraine stuff. So season one, episode five, take it away. All right. I'm John Shrek McPhee, the sheriff of Baghdad. This is the SOB podcast. I have a special guest with me here today. Uh, the man I actually got me into podcasting, (laughs) uh, got me into podcasting. We started this, uh, September 1st of 2015. Spencer Pratt. What's up? What's up? OMG. What's even wilder is pre 2015. We were on that, the original, I guess, zoom for podcasting, that gab thing. We did that even before the podcast. Oh, so. Periscope. Para- Remember we do lives on Periscope. Remember that Periscope? Oh my gosh. So, uh, yeah, we're back. I'll tell you why I ghosted the podcast is I had <laughs> gone off the reservation and been out of the public sphere for a good solid five years at that point, just hiding out at the beach And that was the first time I started getting hate again, you know, because nobody wants to, you know, they want people, people want to hear the sheriff of Baghdad. They don't want to hear Spencer Pratt. But what I realized is those are just haters because I have now talked to a lot of people that actually like hearing my questions as a, you just, just a, a questioner, a person that likes to ask questions. So I just hadn't, I didn't have the thick skin that I did back in the old days but sucks for uh, all our listeners now that hate. I'm back on TikTok where there's more haters than <laughs> any. So I've, I've built up. So feel free to join the <laughs> hater club if you have a problem with the podcast coming back. But my, I told my wife we were bringing the podcast back to the OG, you know, day one. And she's like, oh, no. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, they're going to come for you like Joe Rogan. But I was like, <laughs> honey, Joe Rogan is like 11 million listeners. She's like, Joe Rogan isn't on a podcast with Shrek. I was like, oh, well, the good news, honey, is I think I've already been shadow banned just for my uh, engagement with you on social media. I've now learned that you literally like people Real. or share their content. You get shadow yeah. banned. So I didn't even need a podcast. But um, I'm so happy we're back. I think in the next 10 years of doing this, we'll eventually get rich and famous off the podcast. <laughs> so Amen. What I have learned also in the last five years, or is that five years? I don't know the math, but is is consistency. And if I was consistent at anything, I would have success. So there's one thing I love talking about is commando life with you. And that is the other problem. I'm sorry to our listeners, but I stopped podcasting because I just started FaceTiming Big Shoot. That's his <laughs> other new alias my four-year-old son created for him. If you didn't know, he's Shrek, Sheriff of Baghdad, a.k.a. Big Shoot. You know your four-year-old sees spirits when he just looks at Shrek and calls him Big Shoot. Right? So that may be, <laughs> may be better than his nickname, Shrek. But uh, So I'm so pumped, and we're back. I feel like we've had so many years of experiences that happened that you know we could do a time machine back and let's just say for all of covid every single day uh shrek and i had a drinking competition while dry firing on facetime which was probably the highlight of the pandemic for me when i think about pandemic, legit and i say this i'd like to start that as a club grab a cocktail We'll get together, big Zoom meeting, right? And we dry fire. This is what we're working on while we talk shop, crap, whatever, right? The other best thing I took out of that, I haven't dry fired since we last dry fired because you've also taught me that you'll, why 
even risk doing one thing wrong, which, you know, a lot of guys, I used to be one of those people, you sit there, you're like, Papa, he just dry fire and training, but you could just be doing bad habits for an hour yeah. versus doing one dry fire perfect and just like lock everything in and then just walk away. I don't even do that because I, I don't even think I do that perfect. And I just have the drink instead. It's interesting <laughs> we chose to do the podcast so early in the morning. I, in the future, we should do two episodes a week. One is the sober version, and then one is the just like all out blackout podcast. The, that could be the that could be the name of it. Just blackout, blackout podcast. There's got to be dozens of them. You know what I mean? Like if yeah, if I was know. a college kid, that'd be exactly what I'd be calling it. I don't know, but I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, look, it's really hard to believe that uh, you had, and it took you some convincing, right? Because I know I said no first, because <laughs> it's what I always do, right? But uh, I know it took some convincing, but yeah, look, this is was, uh, I was like, look, well, all right, let's do it. And I, I made this on my, uh, an app on my phone. Yeah, no, I, I it's good and bad. I don't know if I would have got to do the hills and got those checks because I would have probably got myself canceled from podcasting if we kept going on the path we'd gone, especially if we podcasted through the pandemic. Like neither of us can just not say the truth. So it's good. The hills is canceled. You can't cancel any any more of my checks. I, you know, I'm, I'm unleashed, as we can say. So the timing's perfect. And and I learned a lot about uh trying to be famous again and that you're better off just doing your own grind, which, and what you love. And I love talking. And, oh my God, we can say the D word now. Breaking news. Hit the horn. Hit the horn. What are you I, talking last, about? Who said that? Who, wait, who said that? Uh, since we started, <laughs> JSOC that? uses the D word like, all the time. I mean, that was why it was. I mean, they're doing press releases yeah. with well, highlight reels of raids now on nah. the White House. For uh, me, so. I don't. I think we should still be cool. You know what I mean? It's not like our parents just went away on vacation for the first oh, time. But oh, I, the thought, I thought it, I hear you. It is more commonplace. It is uh, more in the forefront, right? So. Um, I wouldn't give it like the DJ air horn. I'd give it more. Nah. Like... <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd give it a. We need little... a golf clap. I do need a golf clap. I don't got one yet. My bad. My bad. All right. So um, let's... okay. Hey, so all right. Let me ask you this: uh, the hills, right? Like, um, you know, you know, I don't. The only stuff I know about is really what I hear from you, right? Because. Uh, I didn't watch any of that because I was in Iraq or Afghanistan those years, right? So, uh, hey, let me ask about the hills, right? Um, it's over forever pretty much for now, right? Um, what's the biggest lesson learned out of that, like out of that whole thing? Like you've been famous and super rich to just, you know, <laughs> it's the regular dude, you know, dad, and then, you know, back to being on the hills, like, What's your lessons learned if someone was to like, what if someone was to get famous right now? What would you tell them the biggest kind of things to watch? Oh, I would tell them you got one week, make it count. Fame is so different now than the old linear TV world of fame. So, you know, even coming back onto television and I'm on a TV show, I still got haters like in the comments section, like this guy trying to like trying to be famous, like, Ooh, I'm on television. Like I'm on a TV show right now. I have a Chiron that pops up. Like, so the expectation of like the hater audience member, like if you are not, you know, Tom Cruise, you can't even say you're famous. So now everyone's famous. Everyone has IG story. Everyone has TikTok. Everyone goes live on Instagram. So what I learned if I go back in time is I should have, you know, only invested in ammo uh, night vision, lasers, you know, things that actually have value. So I got caught up in buying designer clothes and cause you want to look the part on, you know, but I should have just been wearing Arcteryx, which I did. I didn't appreciate look at it that as designer drip. I just thought that was like my, now it is now I can't even, you know, it's, it's wild how the game changes. I used to buy that at REI and that's what I wear like when I wasn't on camera or, you know, doing paparazzi photos. And now it's what celebrities wear. So uh, first I would say 
you know, fame is so not a thing. You can't, it's, unless you're literally invading a country and then you're going to do like pap shots every day while you're like, you know, it's, you're up against everything. Now, everyone's got the fame thing figured out, like the politicians, the, you know, war criminals, the whoever, everyone's got social media down before it was just like a niche, just people in Hollywood, but now it's everything. So, um, yeah, I would have spent my money on, you know, things that I, like I, the fact that I don't have an armored like SUV right now with all the money I spent back in the day, like things like that haunt me that I don't have like a Denali that's fully up armored. You know, like, <laughs> like how, how do I not have that? Like, I will say I did at one time own a, a, a Brinks truck, but then you find out like a Brinks truck can't go fast up a hill and then you smoke out the engine and you destroy it. Like, so I blew it, but yeah. Long story short, I, I just I realized I should just stick to what I'm good at selling rocks or crystals at Pratdaddy.com. Yeah. Woo, we out here. We <laughs> learned how to promo. We learned how to promo. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I do want to. Hustling rocks, hustling rocks. So, and then I also lost sight of like when we first started grinding together. For people that don't know, I'm sure you heard it, but if you didn't listen to our old podcast, how I met Shrek is I read the book Kill Bin Laden and I emailed uh, RIP in heaven, Dalton Fury, and I said, hey, I want to do this documentary where you hunt real terrorists, uh, kind of like Dog the Bounty Hunter, extreme version, or like war criminals. And I was like, uh, who would be the best for this? And he wrote back to me and he's like, oh, that'd be Shrek, but I don't know if I'll talk to you. And I was like, well, just give him my number. So then one day I get a call, you know, as I'm living at the beach, just out of the game and he hits you up and I'm like, yeah, here's the idea. Be you on singleton missions, hunting terrorists solo for like Nat Geo. And he checks like, I'm in. I'm like, all right, let's go to Nat Geo and talk. So we go to Nat Geo. They're all over it. We're doing it. And then all of a sudden they find out, oh, it's like super illegal to like go to other countries and (laughs) kidnap people, even if they're yeah, like, what? So but if we'd stayed eye on the prize, I feel like by now we would have sold a movie or a TV show. So that's my fault. Shrek's so busy with teaching and training. And I was so busy just trying to be famous that like it is what it is. We're here now. We're going to we're going to get back to our hustle because I'm very free again. But we should have at least one show that already aired. You did get on TV. We energetically got yeah. you on kicking on screaming yeah, on Fox. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So. We did manifest you into reality, which you were robbed and you should have been just the host of that show. But uh, yeah, that was a long answer. I, I learned a lot. I still learn every day, but it, mainly it was just, I should have bought more night vision and lasers really. Yeah. More hard, it's, more stuff to show for your money. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's just like that I could pass to my son. Like yeah. if I had bought Gucci night vision, like five sets of it, a, it goes up in value. Right. No, like, right. Yeah. It's, no, it's a yeah. good, you know, so it's just, I just bought a lot of dumb things. <laughs> and you know what I learned is like, I, I mean, I probably wasted, I think I have the tax somewhere like somewhere it says, I spent like a million dollars, like literally on the taxes, just in ammo training with, you know, all due respect, uh, frauds. Cause you know, this is pre Instagram where now at least people can fake it on the Instagram. And, but if you really deep dive their social media and you really watch what they're saying, but back when I was doing my gun training with Heidi, like you would get a pamphlet at the gun store, like word of mouth. And there'd be like four photos and like three bullet points. It was like train CIA, train assassins, you know, I'm like, dang, okay. You know, so uh, I, that I wish I spent so much money training the wrong way when, you know, I could have just FaceTime for a hundred dollars with you and probably saved a million dollars. So <laughs> things like that, you know, better, you do better. Yeah. I hear you, man. Um, Hey, what would you say about money? Like if someone ran into a ton of money, do you like stash some up front as a safety net? Like what? The best thing that we ever did with money besides buy ammo, because I mean, I when it was legal to resell it. 
when it was legal to resell it. Now I don't think you can legally resell ammo in California, but back in, I think Obama came early Obama, it was still legal. And if I'm wrong, then it was a different time when it was legal to sell your ammo. Like I made a lot of cash cause I like, I bought it back in the day cheap and then I sold it at Obama time. So ammo was always a great investment. And then the other thing that we bought that thankfully was the one thing it's hard to spend. So we had some left to put it down on a house to move into was gold. It's harder to buy now because it's thanks to, you know, uh, a loan bank. which loan? City National Bank just got in the mail. Which loan? Our second loan that we applied for the forgiveness for. Oh, that's great news. We got loan forgiveness players Woo. there for big time. Woo! Woo. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there, thankfully during the pandemic, side note, we kept our whole Pratt Daddy team. So the government did one nice thing where they gave you like a break on your payroll. So like not firing people, even though we should have fired yeah. everyone, uh, <laughs> got us a little money back. So that's great. But, uh, yeah, we bought gold and it's so hard to actually go around and spend gold coins. Like, so if you were to buy, uh, spend you know, transfer all your money into gold and put it in safety deposit box. The idea like, Oh, you want to go buy something? Like you got to go to the bank, get some gold coins, go to the gold guy that like gives you cash for it. It starts making all these like roadblocks of like, do I really going to spend this money? Oh my so goodness. the other problem with gold is before I put it in like a big safe, you can get jacked. Like I had a shady bodyguard steal, like at least, I don't know, a lot of our gold coins. Cause People can steal your gold coins if you just got gold coins everywhere. True. That's true. So gold, gold and ammo. It's just gold. pirates, pirates life. Gold is ammo. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're having way too much fun, DJ, right. with that. Very good. Uh, so yeah, Real. but I, I'm still learning. I I need to do what you've been doing with the that new. Our bank wouldn't let us do it. What Shrek does, he has like five bank accounts. So when he makes money, he like puts one in the tax account, one in the like yeah. I can spend account, one in the like he's like it's yeah. a mission. No, yeah. But. Uh yeah, that it's called Profit First, right? This guy, I forget his name. I read his books. It just made sense to me. And what I didn't know is the the girl that works for me, that's how she was taught by her a family. Right. Like uh, they're Dutch. I think they're Dutch. Right. Something like that. They say they're Dutch. I don't know what nationality they are, but their fam sure family taught her that. But uh, really, it's kind of evolved a little bit into um, I have an operational budget. Right. Like if if you take in a hundred dollars a month. Right. Forty is my operational budget. Right. And that's how much it costs to get supplies to do, you know, Internet, rent, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then. You have your profit, your pay. You got to pay people. That's a percentage. And then your taxes. And now with my taxes, uh, I didn't even do, I don't even keep it in my own bank account anymore. I close the bank account down and I just send it right to the IRS because if I pay too much, they'll pay me back. And I will still have paid them. So I pay them every month. <laughs> I, need, I need to start doing that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. It, it'll so, yeah. End of the year. Trust me. Yeah. God, it's like it what's wild about that's the other thing about money. I was talking to my dad, you know, who's a who's a dentist, a hardworking guy. And, you know, but when he would make money back in the day, you know, I don't know the taxes back in his day or whatever, but all I know is the money that I've made over the years in Hollywood, if it was the old days, I would have so many houses and it's just these I I blame Silicon Valley and these new billionaires that are just imaginary. 300 billionaires and whatever because they just changed the value of like a dollar i mean I, again don't listen to me this isn't any you know <laughs> this is not but how i feel when i look at the landscape is like this, a dentist used not to make financial <laughs> advice yeah like don't uh, this isn't even this isn't even actual <laughs> who knows but this is my theory like a dentist was like a good job that made a lot of money my dad would say i said why did you make become a dentist and he was like because every dentist I know made the most money. And so that gauge to me pre like internet world and all these new ways people make money, like a dentist was a good job or a doctor. And these are like the pretty much you could make a little bit more, maybe doing something else. But now there's all these imaginary 
like this guy lives down the street from us. Uh, he owns, I'll just, you know, whatever. He He's the founder of Patreon. And somebody I know who knows somebody was saying that, you know, the guy was complaining about, uh, you know, I don't want to catch a case. Who knows what this guy does? Let's say an imaginary billionaire, but their, their money, they can't actually access it. So it shouldn't be allowed to be taken into account. It's, they have to sell stock to get it. And then they devalue that stuff. It's, I don't know. Don't get me started, but I should be rich is my point, but we're going to come back. Yep. Everybody. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Moral of the story is. Bomb um, right uh, there. No, <laughs> There we go. I, we should all be rich. So, but good yeah, thing, real. good thing we have, you know, all this, the government's got all this money to invest in, in smart things. Um, but we're going to get this Spotify money. Like if Joe Rogan got 250 <laughs> million, uh, Shrek and I are going to get a couple million one day. Just watch like at least. Oh watch. yeah. Yeah. Real talk, real talk, man. Real talk. So since for seven years, I, there's so many things that we've watched, you know, we can get to current events, but just over the years, the landscape, and I've listened to every one of your podcast podcasts, which have been incredible. And as soon as you figure out how to get your guests to have as good audio as you do, there will be masterpieces, <laughs> but it's like some of these listen, some of these I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. Um, don't try to call Shrek and tell him about audio though. You uh, unless you want, unless you want the problem is, is I edit them. So it's like, I got to tell people like, look, it is what it is. Like, <laughs> yeah. it is. don't say it. And that's it. There's this your- one's going to be good though. We got, we got mics. We got, oh, we got yeah. this new we, technology. We got, oh, player. We got that. Dude. We got the, I got the green screen, fake bookshelf behind me. It looks yeah. all with all the fake books. <laughs> BG, you got really- that. You feel going on. Yeah, right? I'm really in a laundry room. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, since we've last talked, which I haven't got to hear you talk about in a podcast, is how do I word this respectfully? You know, because people already think you're a hater. Is watching the internet turn into like before when we first started talking? You were the first tier one commando on social media, I don't like a a legit one, you know, but since we've talked, it has become the most like diluted who's real. Like it's hard for me sometimes. And I got to call and check with you because people are good at like, you know, playing the part and not talking the talk, you know, people are good actors. Yeah. That's what we'll call them. So, for you, you don't even want to see it. I try to send you videos and you're like, you know, oh, it makes you, like, watch. you don't, you can't even watch it. But, <laughs> wh- and, and the weirdest part is, is these guys are so successful. So we come back to this thing that you and I talk about is do the consumer, do they want to want to just be lied to and feel like they're connected to something or are these people just like me back in the day with the OG pamphlet? Oh, I'm training with the CIA assassin, you know, trainers. Like I've watched like the gunfighting world on the internet that I, you know, I follow everything on my Finsta. Uh, it really has turned into like, as you would say, like a circus or a clown show. And, and then at the end of the day, it's dangerous is what we come back down to because you know, some of the stuff we see is it's like, what is this guy teach? You know, so yeah, where, because I haven't heard you talk about that on any of the podcasts. You, a little bit in the members group. Shout out SOB uh, <laughs> membership group and the and the sub sets that yeah. stack and stack knowledge. Yeah, if you want the best memes on the internet, join the <laughs> SOB membership stack freaking crew. He's got a professional uh, uh what are they called? The 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 meme where the Russians have them, the like bot farms. You got uh, your own like information. Yeah. <laughs> you got your own like meme farm. Propaganda, man. yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Seriously, the guy sent them. Um yeah. Look, I would say this. I think it's uh it's several layers deep. Like Literally, when you talked to me in Instagram, I was the first commando on Instagram. And since then, like, I'm not even the biggest anymore, you know. Um, I would say this is that I think it started with uh, what I always say the soft enemy concept is. And the soft enemy concept is, is whatever you did in Iraq or Afghanistan, you could do that here right now. Right. Um, but 
I think, you know, if I walked in backwards with a revolver naked, you know what I mean? That mean I'm going to teach everybody just because I pulled it off once, right? Because I could have pulled off some crazy ass shit, right? And I have, right? It doesn't mean that's what you teach people or that's where you should spend your time training, right? And I think the next thing with the social media piece or, or any of it is, you know, now lately, which, uh, you know, current events, I think right now we're very much in a propaganda war, right? Like, uh, you know, and I don't even want to, I don't even want to bring this up. Right. But, uh, for example, in the Ukraine, right, there's a lot of call for, uh, Americans, hey, come over, bring a rifle. We'll hand you a rifle. I waive all the visa requirements. Come here right now. We'll hand you a rifle. You can fight for us. Right. And they're calling for all badass Americans right now. But the truth is, is like, you don't think that could be Russian disinformation so they could kill as many Americans as possible? Because uh, think about this. That's what I would be doing. You know what I mean? So uh, I think right now it has been diluted to a point where you no longer know what's real, what's not. You know what I mean? Um, and I think the the biggest thing that you could do is the word of mouth. You know, like if someone went to somebody and they were good, right? Tell someone else, right? Uh, social media is not real. And, and I think the last thing, all of it, why social media gets diluted is because all these like, you know, I don't know. The kids on the internet, they just want to shoot fast, make cool videos. Then they get millions of likes. It doesn't make them a gunfighter. It doesn't make them. Uh, it doesn't make them anything other than a kid who made videos that got pretty good on his own, right? I would not say anything other to that kid than if you want to do this for real, go get in the game for real. But what that kid would quickly learn is, I mean, think about this, you know, you watch one of these Jason Bourne movies, you'd have to be world champion MMA fighter to just run through everyone you run through. You'd have to be world-class pistol, ipsic, call it whatever you want to run through anyone you run through with any weapon system you touch, right? Like, okay, yo, when you got time for all this secret shit, you know what I mean? Like, because you're, the bulk of your day would be spending your entire life getting to the top of your game, right? So um, I think a lot of times, like, guys ask why I don't make videos. And it's like, because that's not realistic training. I wouldn't train like that. I wouldn't tell you to train like that. I wouldn't even ask you to train like that, right? Um, so, you know, but what people think good training is and what these kids show are more kind of on par and we get to the point where it's like, you know, it, it's kind of like this. It kind of works like this, like porn, right? Like, you know, um, Hey, you know, you ever see like the memes where the guys like says to his wife, you know, Hey, you watch cooking shows all day long. How come this not bad? This isn't better. Right. And the wife's like, you watch porn all day. How come you don't fuck better? Right. Uh, it just cause you're watching it doesn't mean you're going to do it better. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, right, we've we've gotten down this rabbit hole where it's just a diluted fact on a diluted fact. And there ends up being no real principles to it. Right. And then to have to do anything well or successful, there's principles to it. What do I mean by that is football has rules. Baseball has rules. Right. If there was no rules, it wouldn't be baseball, would it? Right. It'd be, uh, I don't know, combat baseball, <laughs> uh, which, you know, I played in the army a few times, right? It gets rough, um, but it wouldn't be the same thing. So I think uh, all this stuff just kind of dilutes the training. And it's like, and then a lot of times, like, I'm not a, there's a million ways to skin a cat, tactics, whatever, a million ways to do all that stuff. I get it, right? Um, the truth is, is like, if there's a million ways to do it, right, what ends up happening is, is, okay, if there's a million ways to do it, what do we need to look at next? We need to look at what is the do not do. What do we not do in this situation? That's what we need to know, right? So when we go, when we talk about the do not do's, what you'll have is a lot shorter list of, of shit you shouldn't be doing. If a guy crosses one of those in these trainings and, and someone else doesn't notice, 
right? Like, why am I going to debate the merits of this? This is a fucking hard no. And most of the times I say stuff like that to guys, it goes back to one of the four safety rules, right? So again, it takes us back to safety, right? And the, and this conversation's circular, right? But um, these guys that'll make these cool videos has diluted how to get there for real people forever. Bingo. What will go back to that one thing I don't want to forget. So I've been going through your hard drive from Iraq, looking at all the helmet cam footage for, you know, a project we're trying to do. And the most, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get a little water <laughs> out yeah. of my SOB. Oh, <laughs> tactical. Well, played. well played knowledge bomb. <clears throat> so I have been looking through that. And one of the most like things that blew me away is all due respect to like, you know, night vision rays with green lasers is it does not look like an action movie. It looks so, how do I say this respectfully boring, you know, like it's not. And then I was like, yo, where are all the like, and you're like, when you do things right, it does not look like that's, that's when things are done right. When it just looks like, I don't even know how to Check describe it. Let, I'll describe it this way. Oh. And I always tell this joke. There's two bulls on the top of the hill, the young bull and the old bull. Young bull looks at the old bull and says, hey, pop, let's run down and fuck a cow. Right. And the old bull says, no, son, let's walk down and fuck them all. And that's the difference. Right. And what people don't understand is like, look, if, if I went to a jujitsu tournament, Right. We go, we go to a tournament, right? Let's say it's a Grand Prix. There's eight guys. One guy's going to be the champion at the end of the day. Makes sense. Right. Would you rather have, you know, eight 10 second fights or, you know, go 40 minutes on each one? Right. And, and then what this does is it creates a system of winning, right? Imagine this. Imagine if you had enough partners and logistically this would be impossible, but imagine training for a Grand Prix where you found 16 other dudes you had to run through every day, right? Like you'd, you'd create a system of winning, not just winning one fight and taking a break. You can, you'd have a multiple fight and there'd be a mindset to it and there'd be a way to lead into these things to expedite it quicker, right? This is, this is the concept of the Daisy Fresh guys we talk about, right? Um, it's that think tank like a thing, right? So you'd have to train like that. Well, what ends up happening is, is, well, of course you can't really train like that, but over time, look, if we're going to, if we're going to do this 10 times the night, I want to just completely run over you all 10 times, right? Because then if you tried to fight, well, we'd run over you anyway. And if you don't want to fight, well, we'd probably run over you anyway, or maybe we could stop. Who knows? We'll figure it out when we get there. Right. Um, but the reality is, is what ends up happening is, is look, Dude, you come up in the middle of the night and you just use a little bit of stealth. You don't even got to be quiet, right? I could seal off your compound for by the time you get to a door, you get to st look to run away, right? There's probably already a dude standing there waiting to catch you. And we call that the dirty patch. <laughs> and, and we open a gate and you're going to go, oh my God, the gate's open. We're running that way. And that's where we search you. Um, so what ends up happening is, is how, how, when you come up and this is what people don't understand. There's training. Yes. There's tactics. Yes. Training gets skill. Yes. Training could be in tactics as well. Yes. However, training for a system of winning, right? Every engagement you step up to, this is where, uh, a lot of guys, my generation that just had to do this thousands of times in the beginning, figuring this out or whatever, this is where, uh, you know, it's a whole different mindset from guys like us. You know what I mean? And I try to describe that to people and I, you know, I can teach, uh, I can go to a police department, teach their SWAT team, great things. I could, I could teach, you know, crash and shoots, you know, I'm at these police departments doing these crash and shoot stuff and I can teach anything like this. Cause this is my experience. This is what I did. 
But to create a system of winning would take me going out and setting up these mock scenarios and being in charge a couple times to see how I run it and then and then and then get everyone running through it to where anyone could run this and everyone knows everyone's job, right? And when that happens, this is where you start create this winning because you do so many of these scenarios, right? You're gonna win every one. And if logistically you had different people to fight you every time, and no matter who they threw at you, you're still gonna do this, you could go out and do this for real anywhere you want. You know what I mean? And that's a lot of times what our training was, was there's no solution, there's no answer to it. Well, how do you solve the problem? Oh, oh, we don't know. We just present you to the problems. It's up to you to find the solution, no matter what life throws at you, right? And, and uh, you know, when you adopt that as a mindset, this is when you're going to start the process of winning. And I would also say this, um, there's never any leadership like courses for most leaders, right? And what do I mean by that is when I was in the unit, a team leader, right? Later, I was in special forces. I did troop SAR major stuff. I was a SAR major, right? I did all that stuff. What I would say is like rangers have a very good system of, of regimented training and progression, right? Um special forces doesn't. So I had to train my guys on how to be the best assault team leader. They could be the language to use in CQB, how to look at this, where they need to be. Right. Because you're no longer just a guy that can run around with a gun and be anywhere. If you, you know, if you're, you know, your team is supposed to do certain things, you got to make sure they get there. You're steering this ship while getting in a gunfight. Right. And that's a lot harder to do. Excuse me. So um, there's some you got to be able to do every skill. And then at the same time, you got to open that, you know, all your vision, your everything back up so you can watch from outer space what they see, where you are, what you do. Right. Blah, blah, blah. And then while you're doing all that, you still got to do your shooting. Now, imagine uh, there's nothing to train guys for that. And I would try after my first few rotations, I tried to train guys for that. And when I did it, guys were instantly more successful because I we talked about language, communication, strategy, a time to be just short with it. Two words could code words, pro words, whatever you call them Two, you know, I yell, you know, landslide right now. Everyone's leaving this fucking building because we're not going to die here. And I could never yell what was going on fast enough where I could say one word and we're all gone, right? So I would start to train them. But what ends up happening is you could be in these situations and not be as effective as you could have been, right? As you've done this long term, right? And um, I just think this system of winning and this mindset, you know, it's more of a coaching mindset. It's more of a, you know, let's play with what we got. Let's do this. And that when you get to that, when a team gets to that, no matter if you train one day a month, I don't care. You ain't got hours. Uh, you could still be training as effectively as possible. And I think that's what separates guys that can make organizations, right? And or guys that just come out and show you how to reload better. <laughs> Makes sense? That, <clears throat> excuse me. Edit that out, coach. Um so uh, that was the most interesting thing. I always pictured out, you know, I watched so much training on the internet, blah, 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 how quiet all these raids really were. There was like, I don't even think I ever like the, there wasn't much talking. It was like, oh, just okay. boom, room, room, room. Like, and just like, like it almost looked like an avalanche of people, like how it would pour yeah. Yeah. through each room. And then I also never, until I really saw it, appreciated because they've never really showed it in a movie either, you know, Zero, Dark Thirty, any of these movies. They've never showed how many green lasers get pointed at a building <laughs> from low, high. Like, it looks like a laser light show. You know, <laughs> you know, so I also didn't realize the numbers. Maybe some of these videos I watched were like, we had more guys that day. But, like, whoa. Like, there is it's not. I think when people think of the unit or you know, these teams, they think it's like small. It's like, you guys roll deep. <laughs> like, yeah, I think, uh, 
Yeah, as a SAR major, a troop SAR major, I think I had like 36 for helicopters, 56 for vehicles. Now, you know, two guys are staying in each vehicle, a driver and a gunner, right? So we got six vehicles. There's 12 dudes off the top just getting us there. You know what I mean? Like, uh, but yeah, there is a lot of people, you know what I mean? It's, it's um the smaller raid concept the, look the only person that's sending people out alone is the unit I, I i couldn't see if you were in special forces you could be out with another dude or you could be out alone but nowhere that i'm aware of is there is there like uh you know uh special forces guys ready to go out alone and be effective and you know what i mean like uh I just, I don't see it right. And, um, and that's, that's one of the beauties of the unit and they'll train you how to do it and they'll prepare you for it. But I can tell you this, once they know you can do it, you're going to get asked to do a ton of fucking shit. Uh, never let on your secret trades or they will just abuse you from there on out. So another thing since you, let's just, I'm total tangent, but since we've last yeah. talked that I find interesting is how many, unit ig fan accounts there are now where guys i don't even know if i've shown you this but there are guys that actually they recreate the entire kit yeah. from even if it's like the vintage uh plate carriers some guys still run the para what's that one dude Paracle. yeah, Paraclete. yeah. Yeah, yeah they'll like find these and they, these guys do that but why i love the accounts is because they are so good at finding photos that are out there of unit guys in, you know, Syria or Africa, like all these places that if it weren't for these like internet freaking like investigators. And so as a mall ninja, super fan here, I love seeing the kit and everyone thing that these yeah. guys are using. And what is interesting is from the photos of your day to now, how the unit kit that I see has not, change that much like when you like it almost you could put your photos next to the new operators so that is interesting in the sense that that you know you're out of what 2012 we're in 2022 i'm looking at you know photos the guy your buddy that used to be your jujitsu uh buddy uh what's that guy the who became like the general austin austin Mil no, the Mil miller 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 has like a, the, so on the internet, Miller's unit security detail has get, they get the most photos because he <laughs> is, you know, out and about with cameras and stuff. So like these guys have, uh, it's what was, you know, the one thing I noticed that you never, I never saw any photos. Maybe they didn't. These guys are running 45, like, like a 45 mag. Like they got the bigger mags, like, I never saw any photos of you at like a uh, mag that personal, these guys personal. got personal. No, that's just personal. Yeah. I mean, and I've also see, these, seen these guys with extended Glock mags. I've never mm -hmm. seen. Is that personal preference too? I never saw you with like a. Yeah. That would all be personal preference stuff. I never tried to stick a pistol back in the 1911 days, the 10 round magazines once in a while would hang up on stuff or it would get ejected or so I always try to keep it as flush to the bottom as possible. I'll, I'll do a reload, but uh, just practice, get better at reloads. That's my advice. Have you told the story to the, on a podcast? I don't think where you told Miller, you better start carrying a gun. And then ever since like, right, didn't that happen? I don't think. I've oh, no, no, no. I, I was just saying like in the beginning, like before, like they attempted or took the attempt on him or whatever, this assassination attempt, uh, he wasn't carrying a gun or nothing. And I was telling you, I was like, after the assassination attempt, I'm watch, I'm like, watch. This dude is the most qualified dude in the room to be carrying a pistol and a rifle. There's no doubt in my mind, right? I was like, he better start carrying the gun and protecting himself. And then it was like, what was it? Like a, the next photos we seen of him, like he was armed. He had the boys with him, right? Like I was like, Ugh. he should have been doing that the whole time. Is that a detail? Like if you were back in where it's like, since he's former unit, you'd kind of want to be on, but it's like also like, ah, oh, man. I mean, it is a high stakes, you know, all due respect to the protective. Yeah. Anything know, like 
That doesn't suck. I mean, I used to, uh, uh, I used to uh, protect Doug Brown all the time, right? Who was the four star so or SOCOM commander, right? Um, he was a four star, and anytime Doug went <laughs> somewhere, he asked for uh, me and this other guy, <laughs> uh, Chill D, uh, and me and Chill would would uh, go with Doug. <laughs> so like, you know, if, if he knew people, he could be like, "Hey, I want these guys." And they're like, okay. Or, you know, if he said, hey, I just need five guys here or there, right? They just schedule the guys in. I mean, you know, there's no real job requirement. You already know what to do. You you wear your guns and ammo, make sure the boss don't get shot. It's not hard to do, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So I'm going to start sending you the photos. I think you'd get a kick out of it, how good these guys are at recreating. Yeah, I've I mean, seen a they've... few of them. I've seen a couple of those pictures where I'm like, I'm looking at it. And I thought it was real. I seen a desert mobility one that I thought was real. Uh, and they had all the shit I used to have. And I'm like, uh, cause I asked, I've been to the, the, the gear stores here. Right. Um, and, uh, I'll ask like, Hey, you ever get any old paraclete or any of that in? Like, Oh, that stuff's expensive. Like, how's it expensive? And they're like, all the guys come in here like a paraclete, uh, old paraclete to be like a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars, and you're like, for the 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 plate carrier, they like cost a hundred dollars new or whatever, right? And they're like, it's uh, these guys scoop them up, they pick them up, right? So that's crazy to me. But I seen a desert mobility one, and I was like, I don't recognize anybody. And then I was like, uh, I think one was one guy was an Asian, and I was like what squadron you know what i mean i was like what and then uh, i start looking and digging a little deeper and it was some airsoft crew those kids did that or whatever i thought it looked amazing even even how they looked facial hair and everything like it was good it was good so that's another thing speaking of airsoft i it's such a hard balance of like loving you know this new world with airsoft and you know i have want to be commando energy too and uh, you know, just this the video game guys, everyone just, I love that more people are into guns, but it comes back to like, it's a, as you would say, a slippery slope where this is going to backfire on us. If these guys don't get to the proper training, learn the, the list, the short list of don'ts. So it, it gets me like nervous because I always feel like gun rights are such a fragile thing. Right. And if we create this new generation of um, sacred cow mindset of, you know, I just am concerned that we're, even though I feel like more people are into guns, the internet's all this good. It's like, it's, if, if there isn't like a, Hey, like red alert kind of thing. I just, it, it almost makes me feel like the powers that be are behind it. Like, let's make, you know, let's get a book because they've already now that's a problem with like, you know, and it's it is what it is. That's just people with wrong perceptions. But the mindset of this, like the average not gun owner is like, why do you need all this kid and looking like a commando? Da, da. So when you like over the top it, which I uh, again, I enjoy the content. I'm not shading it, but the balance is we're fighting against yeah. people that don't want us to have anything. So if it comes off just like so like militia on the internet and like, uh, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of makes me nervous. This new, like the new dress. It's happened fast too, yeah. since we started, you know, talking yeah. about it has. like, it's like, I mean, again, all due respect, like you were the only one. And now it's like, you're like, that's the, my biggest problem with you is you don't care. Again, you're out here training, you're doing things. So I'm like, all these guys have taken our spot yeah. that we built for yeah. you, but don't worry. Cause you're heading over to TikTok. They're, they're not going to be able to compete <laughs> once you've taken over TikTok, and, and the Chinese are totally going to pump you. Cause you know, they want that propaganda <laughs> or whatever. Uh, can we have an intermission? Why I uh, use the, get more water. Don't mess that up. Test, test, test. open as they would say in Hollywood okay Blairs huh. um, but you know what I found interesting I there's this big podcast that uh, operator bro sent me the other day uh, about this author going 
wrote a whole book going in on seals. And I was like, oh, because before everyone thought you were just, you know, a hater on seals. And now like books are being written, you know, the seals are hating on each other. And it's just watching the like, it's just, I know you don't even like talking about it, you know, but it's just so funny to me that, you know, you, you don't even know about this podcast. It's like no. two hours long. This guy wrote an entire book about like how shady the seals are. Wow. Uh, I would say this is uh, I have experience with them. My opinions are from my experience with them. That's it. Those are my opinions because of that. Right. Like I'm not a hater. I'm not a anything else. I'm a guy who's had experiences. If you would ask me, I would share them with you. Right. But if you even say anything other than that, right, it's you're just a hater, right? Just a hater. And that's bizarre, well, by the way. Well, the problem is because most of the people that ask these questions have already spent money either buying a merch from that, you know, identity or they've gone to the classes and got that false ego pump up that they're now, you know, you know, so, so elite. So I think a lot of that is, you know, people that have now invested in that, in that, but, um, so sensei Jay Hunt, uh, called me this morning and he's like, why can't Shrek and his boys just go over to Ukraine and handle this? And I said, you know, I kind of asked Shrek the same question asking why, the Russian, you know, Spetsnets or whoever their version of the unit is, we're not going to say they have that level, but how they haven't just sent their team for real in and taken out who they got to take out. And your response was, uh, because that entire country is again, like, I don't yeah. want to misquote you. You said, yeah, look, um, I would say this is I can't imagine. Okay. Look, uh, I'm not defending Russia, first off. I'm not defending the Ukraine, and I'm not defending us, right? Uh, but here's what I, I would say about this mess. I think the Ukraine government is incredibly corrupt. I think the Russian government is incredibly corrupt. And I think our government is incredibly corrupt. And I think they've always been that way. And we're talking this since civilization has started, right? Uh, this is just how it works. I think this is humanity at its worst, finest, call it whatever you want, right? But I would say this. This is a reason why no one has attacked the United States ever is because, you know, during World War II, if you tried to look up hunting licenses in the United States, right? What you would find is most hunting licenses in this, it were like, I think like 600,000 rifles in the, in, I don't know if that was per state, per whatever, but uh, during World War II and the Japanese were like, if there's that many rifles in anybody has a rifle, we're not going in there because anyone could pop you with a rifle, right? So think about this in the Ukraine. When you arm the entire public, when you arm the entire public, anyone could bust out and pop a cap at you, right? You can't fight an entire population. And that's why they always say the people ultimately have control, right? But you can't fight an entire population. So going into a little town where you don't belong right ain't as easy as you think not since the ground invasion started now if you were talking special operations and no one was expecting it maybe some you know you could you know dress the part look the part sneak in sneak out kind of deal yeah maybe but once the war starts you think any little town you know what i mean imagine your neighborhood you think like you'd start watching who was in and out of your neighborhood and you'd be looking for people who don't fit in you know what i mean and you'd be looking for if you were ukrainian you'd be looking for russian if you were russians you'd be looking for ukrainians right and that's just the way it'd be so i, I think that's humanity right but you can't fight uh, a population that's armed you can't you know what i mean you can't and look anybody who thinks that we don't need weapons here in america what's the first thing ukraine did when the russians went in they handed out rifles to everybody and guess what don't no one know how to use them because they're illegal. 
if Ukraine would have handed out weapons in like 95 or 91, like pre Helsinki Accords and said, we have a second amendment here, you think Russia would have went in? I mean, even if they started handing them out the second, you know, Russia started moving troops towards their border, you know, and they're like, okay, you know, but that's, I feel like they were nervous to do that because I just started watching on Netflix, the Ukraine documentary where the people took out that one guy. So all of a sudden the guy is like, wait a sec, you know, it's a hard balance. They're probably like, I don't want to, these people don't play, but well, yeah. So I guess it's just movie stuff. Cause in my mind, I'm like, why aren't they halo jumping, you know, coming in, you know, da, da, da. where's yeah. the sniper with the no, long I'm, range? You know? I'm sure there's halo jumping by the Russians going on. I'm sure there's static line Russian jumps going on, but okay. What would that accomplish? Right? Like you're not, you're not getting I mean, close enough. Think about D-Day. They dropped 23,000 or some shit. Like, okay. How many guys are they dropping? A hundred. Okay. How is that enough guys to affect change or take that area of the country? Fuck no. The also interesting thing coming out of this from the mall ninja perspective and, you know, looking on Instagram and uh, is the Ukrainian special forces are so like internet kitted out. Like that's the thing about dressing up. Yeah. Like it's back to like, you didn't know that guy wasn't in the unit. He was a kid playing dress up. Like they make you think like, Oh my God, these Ukrainian guys, they must be like the unit. Look at, they got all the night vision. You know, it's, it's so weird that like you can really fake the, the part by like, I'm like, Oh, these guys are so such operators who knows if they can even hit a target, but like they sure look legit with their camo. Yeah. I would say this is, uh, again, uh, I think Ukraine is winning the propaganda war on this everyone looks like a uber commando in a war zone i think they're winning that type of propaganda i think the russian president who used to be an actor and has made a comedian and makes funny videos right ukrainian ukrainian ukrainian, ukrainian president. president yeah i think he knows how to use social media way more than you know so uh i think there's a propaganda war going on right now between them us you know, russians like the whole planet like you, you're trying to believe anything you see on the news i fucking tell you think again that was my favorite thing when this was all going on and i called you right when it first started and you're like oh wait so after two years of covid we're all gonna sudden start believing what we're saying i was like god they played me too like i'm over here turning on cnn and fox news i'm like <laughs> back in this like vortex of just like <laughs> oh my gosh but it, did you see the president of france dressing up yesterday like not in a suit he was like in a green hoodie trying to like look like the ukrainian like you know guy of the people <laughs> thing I'm like, these guys are such he's gonna um, start dressing like him no he did they got a photo of him like in the I'm like dude you're in a french palace you don't need to like try to blend yeah. in <laughs> yeah. it was so funny but yeah i it's you know, I don't want to say anything that's going to get me canceled. It's obviously horrible. I hate seeing, you know, kids getting killed in hospitals. But then I go back to like what I keep thinking about is like, you know, when I go off the Internet and Twitter and emojis and flags, I'm like, well, I feel like I've been I don't know if I look at different parts of the Internet, but like kids dying in Africa have been a thing going on for a long time. But now all of a sudden everyone, and again, I, mm. I'm concerned about kids dying across the board, but it's just so wild when the powers that be with the internet and the media decide like, no, but the Ukrainian kids lives because the Russians is like, but there is horrible people in Africa that we've been watching for years, chopping off kids' hands to a not. So it's just such a, like the power of what we're going to look at. Like, I, I wish we looked at kids dying everywhere and everyone got upset about kids dying and yeah. started raising money for kids in Africa and kids in Syria where it's just kids are dying everywhere, but we're only right now, you know, it's just, it's so There's weird. There's no money in it, <laughs> right? There's no money in it. So why even report on it? And I, it, it kind of works like this. If, if you were like on a ship and you had a, like a radar in each, each time it spins around every little blip on there is like another ship. 
You know what I'm saying? Like you ever see that on TV, right? Mm -hmm. If that thing had like a hundred dots on it, you couldn't tell really which one was which. But if it had just one on there ever, freak you the fuck out. You know what I mean? And like, I think that's kind of deal. It's that one blip on the radar where people are like, oh my God, right? Ukraine, right? When like, well, there's been people being shitty to kids on this planet fucking long time. How many millions of people on this planet are still considered slaves in countries? Like, this is bizarre to me. There, I'm not saying there's bigger problems. I'm not saying there's smaller problems. I'm just saying the news always chooses, right? And they're only choosing for their own ratings, in my opinion. What do you think? Did you see that Putin's, you know, allegedly, who knows, arrested the head of the FSB on the house arrest and for like corrupt? It's like, who even knows if that's true? You know, it's just crazy when you like, it I'll really got it. Like when you get small doses of Putin, right? Like he seemed to be at times more logical than Obama. I thought there's a couple times where what Obama said about it and he said about it, like, kind of made sense you know and then there was a couple times you know like he he just over the years in small doses he kind of has been making sense to me and it's like man i hate to even think that i could agree with putin on certain things but over the years i have and then when you get putin in a big dose like lately because of the ukraine like you start to see like this is fucking scary <laughs> you know what i mean this you know what I mean? This isn't a, it doesn't seem to me a measured or tempered kind of argument here. You know what I mean? Like, this is like emotional. This is bad, I think, you know? That also, like, is the problem with somebody who's so protected. Like, he can launch nukes and he'll be fine in that palace mountain that he built. That I, I sent you that YouTube link. Did you ever watch it of that, yeah. that compound underground? Mm. I mean, like, He's got enough of his hookers in there and his caviar. Like he would be fine but if he started that, a nuclear. That's the whole fucking deal. And this is why war is a failure of politicians to fucking compromise. Because look, if a nuclear war broke out, how many government officials would survive per capita of government officials on the planet? And how many regular people would die per capita of regular people? And I bet you like, Look, you, you think, oh, you think there was a nuclear war like most of our government wouldn't survive? Like, they got plans for that. They work in buildings for that. Like, what do I got? Some fucking two by fours? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like Putin's Putin would win out of that situation. Biden would win because they would live. And then they don't care. They'll expend everybody to get their fucking way. And isn't, isn't this what Hitler made people do as well? It's such a good point that, you know, the problem is because the other countries would keep their like, but the idea of continuity of government gives them, you know, well, like, like you're saying, if they for sure die, how different are the politics? If like, if the president knew like, oh, if nukes go, they're getting me for sure. He's going to really stop anything politically that creates that level of potential destruction but no it's like oh i'm good we got i got my chef da, da, da. i got wi-fi i got every movie on apple tv will still work i downloaded them so it, it's that threw me off i was like people are like oh he's not gonna do my we don't know what dude will do so i just felt like the whole I don't know. I just, it's a hard taking all these billionaires uh, boats. I feel like cause I never had a boat, but I love yachts. And I, every one of these $700 million yachts that I see get confiscated. I hope this doesn't backfire where these guys are actually on FaceTime with Putin, like so mad that their yacht got taken that they're pumping. Like maybe it's the reverse that like, they think, Oh, all the oligarchs are going to, you know, take him out. It's like, no, these guys all have these yachts because of him. They're like probably boys and they're still, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. When I see these yachts get taken, I'm like, Oh my, this is, this is getting crazy now. Stealing yachts. <laughs> don't be playing with another man's yacht. You know, oh, that, that one yacht right now, I think it's in Italy. That's worth maybe 700 billion that they think is connected to Putin. It's, I think, $2 million a month to run this thing. It's got anti-drone 
whatever an anti drone thing is, but like shoots drones out of the sky, laser type things. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just, oh, like, <laughs> wow. So, do you think he misjudged Ukrainians and didn't think they would get this fight? Did he not know how many like stingers and these all these missiles we gave them? Like, what what's your real gut on that? Man, um, so first and foremost, uh, you can't. If you go back and you look at how Russia went into Afghanistan, you'll see the same thing. They went in slow. They went under the guise of peacekeeping, right? And they just think if they overwhelm the area with bodies, they'll win it, you know? But what ends up happening is the fucking cost of war in between, you know what I mean? The you know, uh, innocents getting killed, bombing civilian buildings, right? This pisses people off. The more you're there as a invading force, the more you're pissing people off, the more they want to fucking kill you, right? Um, you arm a population. I mean, think about this. How many millions of people are in Ukraine? I mean, and then think about this. Okay, you're a, you're a male, right? Let's say one of us and we lived in Ukraine. Let's say both of us lived in the Ukraine. Right. You think you got a job right now? Probably not. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a fucking war going on. You know what I mean? I mean, what what else are you going to do? And then what if they bombed the building that killed some of your family? Right. So think about this. You just created an army of how many people? And then think about this. OK, men, women like, look, it's 2022 equal rights across the board. You think women aren't going to want to stay and fight for their homes? I mean, think about this. What are their options? Russia, Soviet Union, Putin, whatever you call it, is in invading your country. You think they don't have family members that knew what that was like in the not so recent past? Right. Right. They've starved them. They've they know. Right. They know what happens when communists take over. So, uh, you know, the fact that they handed out guns and everyone wants to fight, just what else are you going to do? You're going to go to Europe. You're going to what, what What are you going to do? You're going to start life over. At what point do you say, I just can't fucking run no more and, and stand and fight? And I think that when people have that right, you ain't fucking taking shit from them. Because everyone's your fucking enemy. So there's this. Is, he's not getting Ukraine, in your opinion. Or if he did, does, it's never going to be what he thought if, it would be. If he don't seal the deal within like, I'd give him 90 days. Let's bleed him dry in the bread basket of fucking uh, Europe, right? Bleed him fucking dry. Start shooting down aircraft, right? Like, just bleed him fucking dry. You think the, you think he got bled dry in Afghanistan? Wait till we fucking do you in Ukraine, right? And then, but, oh, by the way, he bled us dry in Afghanistan and Iraq. And so did the Chinese. And so did the Iranians. So anytime you make a misstep like this, it's our turn to just fuck with you, right? So I think the longer this goes on, the more of the shit show this needs to become for him, right? And I think right now that uh, because it's new, it's just a war. every day is a war of propaganda. You can't believe shit. Don't believe our fucking news. And if you talk to any communist who's ever lived in a communist country, the first thing they say is like, oh, how cute. You think the news is news? <laughs> Everyone knows the news isn't news in my country. The government owns the news, you know? It's not news. It's propaganda. Everyone knows that but us. So let's play imagination game here. You are Shrek. Everything that's in your garage, everything's in your safe, but you're now in Ukraine. You know, your family got out. They're, they're now in Poland. You're solo. What are you doing with your background and everything as like to go against the Russians, how would you set out? How are you starting? What would be your primary goal? I would say this is uh, my primary goal would keep probably be from preventing my home from getting fucked up. I mean, think about this. You can come home, but what if you got nothing left to come home to? 
What do you do then? What's your family going to do then? So my, my future thought, my thought would be on the future for me and my family. What is the future? Let's get them set up, right? And, oh, maybe we don't want to do this again. Maybe if we move, like, let's just move and be done with it. You know what I mean? So I think there's some some options on the table here, but I don't think you can overlook the fact that you're going to have to take care of your family. And this is the premise why bugging out doesn't work and having a bug out bag and why I think it's fucking stupid because, oh, yeah, let, you want to you want to bug out? OK, Mr. Bug out bag, bug out your whole family, your entire life out of a fucking an entire country pull off that bug out like there's more to it than that you know um but okay i would make sure my family went somewhere make sure they were safe if i was left behind uh i would start going around my town i would talk to my locals right i live here they live here i'm sure i would have seen them around before and i would start knowing these people and know who to trust right and i would stay in place and then i would i would create a network of people that i knew i could trust at certain times with certain things right and i'd start creating my own little network if if the russians came in like i'd fuck them up and i would how would i fuck them up is i just bleed them dry every day someone's dying every day someone's dying there's nothing to look at no one to see there's no real crime here other than every day one of your guys dies eventually they'll get out of the area right especially if it's not a capital city no strategic point to it just a small town you know what i mean like if you are in a capital city you're gonna have to link up with somebody and um you know you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to link up with a larger group right of people if you want to survive right in these type of situations you know people take for granted here in the states our security every day but Think about this. You don't, I mean, think about this. Your family just left. You're in a capital city. You got to fight. How many people you think you know around you who you're going to have to go to war with right now? None. Total fucking blind faith, right? So you're going to have to find a bigger group because if you're alone, the Russians can just get to you alone, right? Um, you know, if, if, if you're in a bigger group, you would have uh, better security, uh, for sure. Right. So I'd be looking to stay in groups and bigger groups. I'd try to never get singled out by anybody. And I try to never do anything alone. You know what I mean? And if, and even if my family stayed and where we lived, wasn't really under attack or whatever, uh, I'd still make my kids never go anywhere alone. You know what I mean? Or without an adult or, and I would just try to be as secure as possible at all times, right? With my family and with their lives, right? Everything else, who cares? All right, with that, President uh, Zelensky, or however you say his name, just slides into at SOB Tactical Instagram and says, we have a blank check We've been told you are who we need to keep me alive. Obviously, you're not a mercenary right now, but is there a number that gets you packing up and going to Ukraine with a blank check? Everything's for sale, playa. Come on. How, so how much? How much? How much would you really go over there right now for? What's the job? Keeping that dude alive, but he wants keeping to be in these cities. Zelensky alive yet uh going anywhere he wants to go giving him total autonomy yet keeping him alive at the same time yeah oh dude um i would say this keeping that dude alive i would say this okay here's what i would say um, I'd probably need a crew of about a hundred dudes like me around him at all times, ready to go at all times. I would have at least 50 with their shit on ready to shoot you in the face at all times. Um, for all hundred, we would need airlift at all times. Why do we need airlift? Because we, we know the pilots. We trust the pilots. These are our fucking planes. Either you get on or you don't. I don't give a fuck. You want to stay alive. We're going to need aviation. We're probably going to need aviation to probably shuttle at least fucking 30, 
I don't know, two lifts, 25 and 25. Uh, so we're going to have to do 50 at a time if we had any type of aviation assets. If we could get more aviation assets, I'd want to be able to move about 20 and bigger helicopters. And I'd want to move about, uh, I don't know, maybe four to eight on little bird type birds where I could put those guys in tighter places. Um, I'd want some snipers. I'd want some assaulters. Um, and then with that, right, is I would need a crew of trusted guys who everyone knows to be my advanced team parties. I'd probably need a probably, I don't know, because we're going to war torn areas, probably need a crew of about 10 dudes for every advanced party just to make sure they don't get fucking schwacked or compromised, right? Harder to compromise 10 people than it is one. You know what I mean? Uh, um, so uh, I would say this is I would never let them dudes go alone because then again, if 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 everyone knew that he hired me, right, the Russian, the Wagner group, first thing they do would they be looking to just gun one of our guys down? We would have to be bigger, faster, more mobile, and stronger than them every step of the fucking way, right? If you think they weren't going to come and get some. Um, I would also, with aviation assets, I would also like some uh, short-range artillery capabilities um, for some type of counteroffensive and maybe even some fast mover support, probably within 20 minutes of anything happening anywhere over Ukraine. So you are the money guy. How much approximately is that? Would that budget be? Because you you know how much more costs. Are we buying these helicopters? This is. This I mean, you you'd probably need to buy them because I don't think you like what Ukraine has right now. This is a easily five hundred to a billion dollar operation keeping that dude alive. I mean, think about this. Putin already sent the Wagner Group after him, right? Like. Those guys are serious, right? Um, uh, I'm not even, look, I'm not even joking about these fucking guys like the Afghan and Iraq, right? You guys have been killing fucking goat herders under the soft enemy concept. You're going to have smart guys, capable guys coming after your fucking ass. And guess what? Their only goal the entire time, especially if they're my fucking age or older guys, right? Guess what? The only thing they know. They want to kill Americans. It goes back to the fucking Cold War, right? So they just want to fucking kill you. So if you think you're going to play around and dick dance and get fucking Instagram points while trying to fight off fucking real Russian special operations types, you're smoking crack, man. It's the stupidest shit I ever heard. I would never play. I would never allow them. And I would never make a misstep if I knew that was my opponent ever. And that because there's a lot there's a lot of guys going over there right now. You know, I keep seeing maybe it's propaganda, maybe, but I see on the news like I'm from Texas. I'm from da da da. Supposedly three Brits, three Brits may allegedly died yesterday, special mm. ex special forces guys. So going over there without 500 million to a billion just seems kind of suicidal, pretty much. I mean, think about this. Russia's coming after that guy. It's no holes barred. He sat in a meeting where Russia put his wife and kids on a fucking kill list. And he asked Putin, take my wife and kids off the kill list. And Putin <laughs> didn't say shit. Uh, not that that's funny, but kind of funny. Um, but um, look, it, this ain't fucking chump change. This ain't fucking games. You know what I mean? There's no games to be played here at all. You know, uh, so I would tell you this is like. If you think this ain't a fuck keeping this guy ain't a billion dollar venture like you, uh, you are underestimating and you will fail long term. So the press and the media were saying that America offered to evacuate, you know, Zelensky or whatever. So would that have cost to get him out of there? Would that have cost that much money or that's a different now well, we're not having to keep him alive? Yeah. How much is that costing to just get him out? Yeah, fuck Chump change. Oh. Hey, keeping him alive and letting him be a wartime like leader and taking him to the major battles or, yo, this is a different ball game, man. Now, you know, not just, you know, like, look, 
Let's say a regular president goes somewhere. They're protecting from the public. Imagine in a war, we got to protect from artillery, enemy gunfire. Like, you know, this goes a lot of layers deep. Now, you there's tactics you can employ to get around stuff like that. Stealth, you know. Uh, however, um, surprise, um, misdirection, you know. Um, it's still, man, like. How how is he still alive? How do you think? Do you think it's just a matter of time? Or um, I think, yeah, I don't know what the Russians thought. I think the Russians thought in ten days this would be done. And I would tell you this, right? Uh, that's what I would have hoped for, and that's what I would have briefed uh, to anybody. Like, hey, we need to wrap this up in the first ten days. Otherwise, this probably goes bad. Um. And, uh, you know, other than that, you know, I mean, think about this. Think about our Pentagon. Think about we can't even win in Afghanistan. You think you think Putin who would probably kill you if you told him something he didn't want to hear? You thinking he's getting good information from his generals right now? So maybe that FSB guy really is on house arrest for bad information. Or the truth. Yeah, exactly. Like, this isn't gonna work. You're on house arrest. Yeah, bad information or the truth, right? Like, <laughs> well, so. it'll be an interesting thing to follow up here. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I feel like it's our first good back in cold opening share for bad guy podcast. Better than yeah. ever. Yeah, I'll tell you one of the things is I've been getting a lot of DM questions about is is Americans, guys, veterans, whatever, whoever they are. I don't know. I'm not going to label them in any way that want to go to Ukraine. I've been getting a ton of those questions. I can't I can't tell you how many different questions I've gotten, how many different ways that I've heard it. Right. Uh, and um I would just say this is like, look, if you're here, would be my, the SAR major advice going into this situation, right? Like, let, let me just say I'm sitting in my office, right? And, and you come in and, you know, like if, if I was in my office, this means I work at JSOC and you would come in and ask me, hey, SAR major, I'm thinking about getting out and going to fight in Ukraine, right? What would your advice to me be? Well, this is what I would tell you. And I've got this question a lot of different ways. I would tell you this. Sounds cool as fuck. You know what I mean? And I get it, right? And this could be the time of your life. And I and I would tell nobody ever not to try, right? Because the only thing you're going to have when you're old is regret. So I would tell you go for everything you've ever wanted to go for. However... If you wanted to do this, I would tell you be smart about it in a lot of ways. Number one, start learning the language. I don't give a shit what your skills are. I don't care if you can load, clear, unload a rifle. I don't care if you even know what an AK looks like at this point. Doesn't even matter. That can be OJT. What can't be OJT is you being in war, not knowing what the fuck people are yelling out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like how do you know the guy's not yelling don't go out there he'll shoot you in the face right like right so i would tell you first and foremost start learning some form of this language now i don't know if the ukrainian dialect is the same as a russian dialect i'm sure they're different i'm sure people can pick out these dialects right i would tell you this if you tried to pick up a dialect pick up a russian mom because if you sounded like you were Russian, you might have been born or something. You'd be less likely to get beheaded by the Russians if they catch you as an American. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, I would tell you first, learn the language, right? Any skill, anything like that can be taught OJT. What do I mean by OJT? You get there, they hand you a rifle. Your training starts now. <laughs> just make sure you don't die before you learn something. That would be on you, right? Um, the next thing I would say is uh, somehow you need to ditch the fact that you're American. Because think about this, man. All the older Russian commanders, army, like, look, these guys have been bred to hate us. They just want to kill Americans to kill Americans, right? They might see Ukraine as like, you know, 
a, a brother or a cousin, right? But they definitely hate them barrel chested freedom fighters. That's for damn sure. Right. So I would try to hide the fact somehow that I was not American, whether that's not having a passport, ditching my, you know, ditch your your stuff somewhere. Right. I would even say if you flew over there, I would want some type of handler where I could hand them all my documentation, my phone, my everything. And I'm out. Right. Um and then later I could call that person and get my fucking real life back if I needed it. Right. So I don't know if there's any handlers like situations, but I would try to conceal the fact that I was uh, American as much as possible, especially amongst the Russians. Um, the next thing I do is I try to link up with uh, people. Either I try to find someone I trusted who is going places or is smart and doing stuff smartly, right? So I'd look for the tactically smart ones and I just go, I may not speak out the language, but I just go stand next to them and just do whatever they told me until I could build some type of trust. You're going to have to trust somebody before you get in the trenches, right? Because if you're in the trenches with people you don't trust, who do you trust? You don't speak the language, right? Like, so... The next thing is you're going to have to find a crew to roll with, uh, whatever that is, whether that's other Americans, whether that's, you know, whatever town you go to, whether it's the people of the town, right? Everyone's going to be breaking down in these smaller groups. Find a smaller group, right? And um, hang with them. So at least in these bad situations, you got some familiar faces around that you know who to trust, right? Um, and then I would tell you, be smart, man. Like, look, a lot of times, like, um, you know, I would say, you know, the second Ranger battalion from D day till the war was over, right? Like about five guys made it the whole way. Right. What did those guys do? Right. The do not do's right. Like don't expose yourself unnecessarily. If you're going to expose yourself, be fucking fast, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, just simple basics like that. So I think, you know, real quick in them first few days, pay attention, get a feel for the battlefield, how this flows, how people act, what they do, right? Stay away from people that get overhyped, right? Try to stay calm, even in the worst of situations, so you can make a good decision. Um, and I'd say, uh, if you're a prior veteran and you were in the army, I'd say act accordingly. You already know what to do. So how do we know that we don't have unit guys or ground branch guys playing as mercenary type, you know, fake identities over there embedded? Would we just not even risk that? Be or that's something we don't, who knows? Cause somebody has got to get all these missiles and stuff to the right people. I would imagine that $400 million is guarded by, somebody that you know we wouldn't just be like oh drop it off uh in the corner it's 400 million and just artillery we got to get it like is would your gut not to like be a snitch but would your gut be there are americans you know without saying that somehow uh, uh, <laughs> if there was allegedly i would say absolutely like why wouldn't there be <laughs> you know what i mean like i think that's a no-brainer if that's happening, I would say. Yeah, because I feel like the amount of money and resources we're putting up, like, publicly, there's no way we don't have guys helping this. Like, it's just hard to imagine that there's not an NSA person over there monitoring for, I don't know. It's just hard to imagine we're doing a proxy war without boots on the ground, even though that's what we've been doing since day one of these type of, like, wars that we're not really fighting, but... Here, we just dropped off 400 million in missiles to shoot you with. I think we do better at this than we do uh, the Afghanistan or Iraq-like situations, believe it or not. Just, I mean, we probably blend in a lot better. No, I mean, like, the fighting, not fighting, behind the scenes, who's there, who ain't, like. I this think is our game. This is am right here, you know what I mean? Um, next episode, your homework, you got to watch Oliver Stone's Through the Looking Glass. Through the Looking Glass. Yeah, about the J. He did a documentary on the JFK thing. 
uh-huh. we got it. You got to watch this. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, because I I watched it a couple of times and I, hey. it's stuff that you already have known and heard, but when you really just watch it laid out by a guy like Oliver, so you're like, oh my gosh! All right, I got one more Ukraine piece of news, and we're gonna wrap it up on this one. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Did you see that Elon Musk emotionally called out Putin to a duel, and winner gets a Ukraine? So I was I was talking about this with Sifu, uh, and I was like, I've seen a lot of clips of Putin, you know, doing judo, but it's kind of like the internet kung fu where the guy like yeah. touches like each student and all fall Master over. Ken. If you didn't you know, know Master Ken, you know, you'd think he was yeah. legit too. Yeah. So I always like well, maybe he's an actual white belt, and yeah. this is all just yeah. scripted. But then I thought, well. Elon definitely, I've seen him with like bodyguards. And if you have $300 billion, you may not have unit guy. He's got some guys that know how to like do something, maybe a little jits, a little, a little Muay Thai. So I'm wondering on the DL, if he for fitness works out with his bodyguards because that, or he just knows that fight's never happening. He's tweeting, but I'm like, oh. what if Elon oh. secretly just like sparring every day? You thought they were going to fight. I thought a duel, like nine paces turn around or like the old West where you're like, you know, the old Clint Eastwood where it's oh. like, by way, you know, like that's oh, what I yeah, think yeah. Of, like an old school duel gunfight. I'll win that motherfucker. Or maybe <laughs> a sword, sword fight, you know, oh, whatever they do with their fingers. I don't know. <laughs> Um. Yeah, yeah I thought so, they were gonna do like the nine pace back to back, turn around and shoot, or like you know what I mean, or the old west where I wait for you to go for it, right? Like hip shot. I obviously we know Elon, you know, builds rockets for the government now, but the moment I was like, oh, this dude is so juiced out when that they tweeted at him like, hey, we want some of your Starlink, and. Next day, there's like a cargo drop. And I'm like, so this guy has the power to drop a transport into a war zone. And he's got guys to get it to like, he is so, I mean, money's just wild. Dude, I, not only did that make me appreciate him to another level, but I also thought this too is like, uh, they knocked down, the Russians shot down a Starlink satellite. And you see what he did the next day? fucking launched a new one with more of them <laughs> right like i was like i was like i when he was like hey starlink t- for everybody i'm turning it on now i was like how gangster was that like go elon you know what i mean no. and they knocked down a satellite like a couple days ago whatever it was and he launched one the next morning man fucking how he owns his own space agency oh you want to knock down you want to target knock down my shit fine so that's an interesting thing guys like elon Bezos, Bill Gates, the type of money they have, they could put, they could relaunch, rebrand like a Blackwater times, no pun intended, billions. Like, so if we really want to do something as Americans, these billionaires could finance a real, they could, okay, you get, you said 500 to a billion dollars. You could keep that dude safe. Okay. Elon, somebody should tweet, you should tweet Elon and be like, Hey, you want to keep that president alive? You know, throw up a billion. I'll put that together right now. Like, we have the financing and it's not the American government to do that. It's interesting that somebody with this type of money, all these hero, like, you know, or hey, Bill Gates, you hey, know what he could do is he know, could just send vaccines for all of the Ukrainians. Bill Gates could hook everybody up. There's a, a, what is it? Polio. There's a, oh, I just delete that out. We're going to get our whole episode. Uh, Bleep that out. We're going to get I, it deleted off of YouTube. I ain't deleting shit. Uh, like do a noise over it or something. Yeah. 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 Their algorithm scans the V word. Yeah. For real. Uh, for real. I don't give a shit. Hey, there's a polio uh, outbreak right now. Right. Oh, oh, let's go conspiracy. It, Speaking of outbreaks real quick. Sorry to interrupt you. What are your thoughts on these bio labs? That ever, you know, because that UN undersecretary, she confirmed it in that congressional thing. And I was like, wait, why is this a conspiracy? She just said there's a bunch and she hopes the Russians don't get to it. And then the White House publicist was like, this is all conspiracy Russian problem. I'm like, wait, 
didn't I just watch her say it to that Marco Rubio dude like a day ago? Have you seen any of this? I haven't seen that, but I would say this, these bio labs, I think that might be legit. I mean, look, we've seen, we, we're starting to get more in on what Wuhan was. You, hey, you think we don't got more of these? Like, and I would say this, like from strategic standpoint, imagine this, we've been putting these in every country and we control them strategically like that's not too shad that's that's a big play that's a big game you know what i mean so uh and i could see why that would make other people mad right uh but yeah what if what if going along with your theory what if we tried to unleash because they you know everything was cracking off in hong kong what if we had some gangster cia dudes and they leaked uh, the Wuhan thing, trying to murk out China, and like they didn't see China like locking everyone in their rooms. But you know that would be a positive version of it. Like, what if we were just trying to take down China with it? I, I like that angle. Yeah, I don't think that's plausible. At- yeah. Look, I would say this is like with the Ukraine bio labs. Look, I don't know if that's real or not. And I know, look, I just told you we are in a propaganda war. I watched the video. Do I believe some of that? Yeah, I believe some is true, right? But remember, with propaganda, 10% is going to be true. And then, you know, the rest is going to be uh, fabricated, right? So, did maybe these things happen? Yes, that makes it plausibly true, right? We don't. We just don't know, man. And I, I'd hate to say like, yes, this is true or it isn't when we don't know yet. But what I would say is, well, there was one of them motherfuckers we ran in Wuhan, wasn't there? And I read the Pentagon papers that said like, hey, you might want to talk to the NIH for this type of work. Right. So um, I think it's very plausible. And I think geniusly, tactically, strategically, it's kind of genius. Mm-hmm. But this is the kind of shit that breeds fucking bad will. You know what I mean? Like uh, putting that shit on people's doorstep. Like, come on, man. This is this is we're home of the free. We'll come kick your ass. Right. Or we leave you the fuck alone. But like (laughs) chemical warfare and shit, we don't want people to do it to us. But yet, look, we'll talk about, you know. Assad gas and his people, but we'll park these labs in other places. We parked one in China. Like, did you ever, when you're in the unit, did you guys ever run drills where you'd have to hit or secure a weapons lab and wear all the weird outfits with all your kit? Mm-hmm. Bring into it. all that, dude. If if uh, if it's been dreamed up in a Dalton Fury or a brad taylor book we probably set that up ran it and figured out how to do it <laughs> fucking around you know so i think i don't know if it was a podcast before i forget speaking of that i don't think we've ever talked about that back in the day the secret service had the unit hit the white house and the first time with that you know and like a drill and the halo jumped onto the this was just like confirmed i guess by some uh, you know, secret service direct. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I mean, maybe it wasn't, but, and it says they like got on all the way up to, you know, wherever their objective was. They like halo jumped and they still never told them because they monitor the airspace, how they pulled off getting, have you heard the story? Was this before your day? Is this public? I haven't or- heard this story from this angle, but I'm interested. Go on. Well, now I got to do more research. I forgot. It was like two weeks I, ago, but I know they said they who allegedly might have landed on the White House lawn and they didn't even know. And they got all the way to the house, allegedly, if it happened, you know, an old guy, he's dead now, too. But um, allegedly, that is a true story as far as I know. Yeah. So I guess the story is there are two things that they like pulled off one was the that and then they also pulled off like a like a hit i don't know i got it we'll check out the next podcast but i was like dang these guys are straight hey, but never never drink in a squadron bar and challenge the unit to not be able to pull off this shit because they'll fucking prove you wrong just to prove you wrong 
just some secret service guy. You guys couldn't hit the White House. Uh, like, we're oh, we're yeah. so secure. Like, bullshit. We'll park dudes on the fucking front lawn at this time on this day. Like, okay, we'll watch for them. Uh, yep, there they come. Oh, shit. Speaking of unit bar, one of the funniest stories I've heard in the last year uh, was that you and your wife went to that famous, Was it's not a bar or a restaurant where all the unit guys hang out, right? And you were all like giving you, staring you uh, down. Like they didn't, they didn't know who you were and they just thought you were just like, no, it's no, this yeah. guy doing it. Yeah. It's the, uh, it's the Southern or the Pinehurst brewery, right? It's a night, it's new. It's in like an old factory. It's really nice. They got great food. You know, it's a brewery, good beer, good booze. Right. But you go in there and there's so many like, you know, tier one types <laughs> that everyone's sitting there eating like, you know, like, you know, my wife, we go in there, you know, I was like, yeah, the dude's mad dog. And yeah, I look over, I'm like, yeah, I know who that guy is. Or uh, my wife's like, hey, this is, uh, I used to work with this guy. Look at him mad dog and us, right? So we just kind of go in there like for lunch, like if we're we're out and about. But uh, we go in there just to get mad dog. And that's just, hey, that's just the way like this area is. When, when you live somewhere where there's a ton of tier one guys, right? Like someone's fucking looking at you someone's whatever right it's kind of funny but uh that is too fun that you just go there but next time we just gotta like go on ig live Be like oh yeah. <laughs> they're like look at this sausage party <laughs> yeah. i'm the only one uh, my wife well uh, i'll shit. start thinking about in the last like seven years i feel like we've had life-changing conversations so i want to tap into those i feel yeah. like you've yeah. put me on so much game as a as a mentor and a friend so i would love for our listeners to get that yeah. opportunity go backwards also as we go forwards yeah i know yeah. i was i was looking at the old ones and and that's where i you know i i pulled this up like you know how cool is that the old SOB podcast, right? With me and you, right? How cool was that at back in the day, right? I mean, um, I mean, you were that was your peak of your photoshopping skills, right? There. It still is. It's still is. Yeah, um, <laughs> you, you know, the guests we need to get back on that I haven't got to ask because I have so many mall ninja questions that you know I've listened to it like seven times because I love hearing you, uh, talk my favorite thing do is, it you know, I says to you that. you know what i mean you know what i mean you know what i mean that's all it says to you because you know what he means I'll say. uh greg thompson because we got to talk about fighting in a car yeah. there's yeah. so much stuff happening in la with carjackings and guys you know i watch it on a weekly basis you know i don't do have it. the nicest car but i definitely have a car that i'm like ready to think about okay they open that they re i just want to talk through carjackings and yeah. You know, now the sheriff in Cal LA is letting people have CCW. So hypothetically, if I had a CCW, how, you know, fighting with a gun, there's just right. so many things with the, and you wanted to talk about fighting in a car as oh, well. So love we got to yes. have that. And, and I, then we're, I want to talk to Hickson again. Yeah. We got to get Hickson on this podcast. We'll yeah. see if that, that one, I, I got paid him a huge chunk of money with Facebook's yeah. money. So we'll see if, uh, He'll do it for some crystals and maybe some ammo <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah, some ammo. Um, so some, we got to get some, Hickson. And this one, we ammo. can be like, you can talk of ammo. Yeah, we did a Hickson podcast on my Facebook audio room. And it was so funny because I told Shrek, like, yo, this is Facebook. You know, you know about guns and killing. We got to be careful. And here we got Hickson just like every other words like oh sh you know shrek would shoot me in the face or cut me down like it was just like murder 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 it was like bro you're supposed to be the 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 chill one yeah um and then uh hey so also we're trying to get a guy who may or may we're waiting for him to get out of his his deal with the government so he could talk right now he's looking into his nda but you know a former hell's angel that ended up becoming in, in the tier one world working on that we're also i already got the the nutritionist and the guy that does all the blood work for seal team six and the unit he's going to come on and talk yeah. about i can't you know, wait that's yeah we should have him do your blood first and then talk a little bit about what was because it'll be interesting and uh yeah so we got a lot of and then please dm I think I read my DMs more than Shrek reads his. He's a lot busier. No, I read. Uh, uh, oh, I, oh, I, oh, I don't know. You're always, I can't even, you're always working. Now you're cutting trees to, down. 
try to keep that. So DM us ideas of guests we go out. Since we've done this, you know, now there's so many podcasts out there that like to talk about what we like to talk about. But I think we should go after some of these same people because we have different questions. Right. I agree. Uh, totally. The one thing that I was really into, uh, this guy that does podcasts well that I watched, you know, good production that I forget Ryan or whatever. He had that cartel guy that Joe Rogan had on that Calderon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have people that you ever dealt with in Mexico that we could, because I feel like the cartel world is at least on Instagram popping, you know, so we got to tap into, and now it's coming into LA. Like guys are getting arrested on the nightly with the the cartel tattoos and the same guns. I'm like, dang, they're here. Yeah. So, so we got we got biker gangs, cartels, nutritionists, uh, you know, you know, all the good guests you could think of. Yeah, uh, it'd be good. So it'd be a good season, right? So look, this is the season five, episode one. And just so you know, the next episode, I got my man Dutch, right? Uh, Chris, he's doing training now, teaches people kind of the same work as I do, right? Uh, he'll be what's on. his Instagram what's his Instagram uh, so I people think it's can like check DM it out I'm consulting right so uh, shout out Dutch and you'll be next week so uh, we'll be talking to Dutch here next week should be pretty good Dutch is a, the only my generation the only, and uh, uh, not only my generation but me and him we're in first ranger battalion together I remember working with him as like years ago years ago in ranger battalion so it's good but the audio messed up, so the best story didn't get made about Mr. Goodbar. So you may have to do a part two, right? Yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, but I mean, oops. We're going to have to do another one, yeah, for sure. All right. For All sure. right. Well, it feels good to have the, the team yeah. back. We waited months trying to figure out a new podcast name, and then we're like, whatever. Who cares? if we, Once we get that Spotify millions, they can name it whatever they want. <laughs> Call it these nuts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they pay. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Well, hey, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one, man. I'll see you later. And this this podcast was brought to you by SOBTactical.com. Make sure to sign up for your membership so you don't miss the weekly secret content. There's tons of free content on there. If you haven't checked it out, you, there is more just – Stop wasting money on the range if it's a money thing. Download the app and then see if you need. You triggered my Siri. <laughs> Siri's like, Siri's got excited. Yeah, I know. All right, sobtactical.com. Sign up for the members. Hey, you know? SOB TV. It's where I spend my time. You know what I mean? And the new slings are, the new slings drop. Uh, They've been restocked. We got a lot of new, new. We'll have to talk about it on the next one. Ah, ah, ah. On the next one. I'm ha- See I'm, you guys. I up. hang up. I'm hitting hang up.